Welcome back. It's me, Sabado. Who's Sabado? Sabado Gigante. Who's Sabado Gigante? You know, Sabado, that retired cat. The Big Saturday. It's me again, back to just talk a little bit about some of the observations I made today. Um, you know, it's funny. I was at the grocery store, and I saw a bunch of people standing in line. And so I'm standing in line. I look over. I'm like, what are they standing in line for? And it turns out there's this big orange lottery machine. So all these people were standing in line, um, I guess, to buy a lottery ticket. And so I looked at the top of the lottery machine, and it said $9.99. And the only time it says $9.99 is when it's over a million, and, or I'm sorry, over a billion. And so it's over a billion dollars worth of lottery winnings. And so I started to think to myself, if you, if you won a billion dollars, what would you do with it? Um, you know, again, as I mentioned in previous videos, most people that won the lottery go broke, not because a billion dollars isn't a lot of money or because millions of dollars isn't a lot of money. It's because they don't have a plan. They haven't thought about what they were going to do. And it's funny because one of the things that I tell my friends all the time when they ask me about retirement is I said, you know, the thing about retiring is you are able to do what it is when you want to do it. And money's not necessarily the, the, object that's right in front of you determining what it is you're going to do. And, you know, many of us say that that's what we want, but a lot of us don't have a plan for how we're going to get there. I have a friend of mine now who's retiring in just a couple of days, and I think he hates talking to me about it because the questions that I ask, while on one end, I'm incredibly excited for him, but I also know this is an individual that likes to be tied up in a lot of projects, that it likes to do things and likes to get things done. Um, and I also know this is an individual who's not necessarily making the decision um, with all the information right out in front of them. And so I ask questions outside of being, hey, this is great. I'm excited for you. But then you start thinking questions about healthcare. Healthcare can be incredibly expensive outside of retirement. You know, the two largest expenses that a person has in retirement are housing and healthcare. So you really have to help with some of those. So in the state that I'm in, we're fortunate because the Affordable Care Act really has pushed down the cost of health care. And this individual, being a few years older than me, would have to pay higher premiums. Um, and so his original thought was, well, I'll just go on COBRA for a year. But the problem with COBRA, and this is what a lot of folks don't understand, is COBRA is usually designed in such a way that you're paying 105% of the plan premium. So let me explain that. If you work in an organization, most organizations on a broad level will have some type of compensation strategy. And so that compensation and benefit strategy might be we want to pay 90 percent of the employee's health care, 50 percent of their dependents, and we'll cover the other 50 percent or the other uh, 90 percent that's, uh, you know, that that's or the, the other percentage that aren't being covered by the, by the employee. The problem with that is, is that in a lot of cases where if the employees aren't responsible for 10%, then when they go on COBRA, not only are they going to be responsible for that other 90%, but then you take 5% and put that over on top of the total cost. And so, for example, my friend is only going to pay $300. He only pays $300 a month right now for insurance, health care, um, and it's a pretty good plan. Once he leaves his health care plan, and this is just for health care, you've now he's probably going to be paying over eleven hundred dollars a month because you've got the other ninety percent plus the five percent on top of that. Um, so that becomes an incredible cost. The time having 40, 50, 60 hours a week of time, you have to understand what it is that you want to do. What do you want to do with your time? If you were one of those people in front of the orange machine, that won the billion dollars. That's great. It's great to have an influx of money, but what would you do with that time? What would you do if you if you could do whatever you want to do and money wasn't an object? We dream about that. We're not used to it. And so it's very important that if you're considering retiring, think about what it is that you're going to do in retirement. And, and it's interesting because some folks, and I'm sure I'll get some comments at some point where people say, well, I'm in my dream job now. Well, that's great. But most people aren't. And the fact of the matter is, is that if people won the lottery, they would probably do something different than they're doing now. But in the event that you are doing a job that you love to do and that you would do for free, then more power to it. 
Maybe you can do it for free. If it's a nonprofit organization or a cause that you feel strongly about, would you do that for free? And then the next question becomes, if I would not do my job, if you're in the 90% of people that would not do their jobs for free, what would you do if you can do anything you want to do? If you woke up in the morning and said, what do I want to do? What is it that you want to do? Would you want to travel? Would you want to play golf? Would you want to play an instrument? Would you want to spend more time with your spouse? Would you want to go for long walks? What is it that you want to do? And I would start asking myself, can I do any of those things now? Am I in a situation where I can start start teaching myself how to uh, play an instrument? Can I start going on longer walks before or after work? Can I make it a point to start spending more time with my spouse? Don't wait for retirement to answer all of your questions because the only thing that happens when you get into retirement and you're trying to answer those questions then is that things become more complicated because you have more time to think and ruminate about them. So take your time, really get to know what it is that you want to do. And as opposed to retirement being an end in of itself, think about what it is that you want to do. Think about what is your personal mission statement? I think in one of the earlier episodes, I talked about my personal mission statement is I want to uplift the human condition any way that I can. I think I have some interesting and compelling things to say, and I think I have some very, very strong and well-grounded perspectives. So one of the ways that I'm hoping to uplift the human condition is through this channel and just sharing information with, uh, with each of you in a way that maybe resonates with you. If it does, great. If it doesn't, I apologize for wasting your time. Um, some of the other stuff that I do, I spend time spending time with friends and really taking time to help friends that might need help or giving advice to friends of mine that really need some strong advice or just being an ear. Uh, now that I have the bandwidth, just being an ear, being a better friend, being a better husband, and just really trying to spend more time with family and close friends, which brings me to another topic, is you start to find when you make this transition that there are a lot of people that you know that you're tied to because of the occupation you were in or because of the environment that you were in or the types of things that you did. And so always remember that when you go through a transition, not everybody's making that journey with you. And some people are still in that place. And you have to allow the grace for them to continue to be in that place. Um, because your dream is your dream. Those things you want to do when you win the lottery are the things that, that you want to do, not necessarily the things that other people want to do. And you have to be ready to find friends that share in that loop, as I like to call it. Some people like to stay in the same loop, but as life continues to change, continue to revise your loop and make sure that you're around people that enrich you. If, if you could be around people for the sake of being around people, and trust me, I've been in situations where I've been around people for the sake of being around people because the window that I had to be around people was so small. But as soon as I found a bigger window to be around different types of people that were going to fill my cup, a lot of people just didn't make the cut. They're not bad people. I don't dislike these individuals. They're great human beings, but we're just on a different, on a, on a different frequency. And being on a different frequency sometimes causes us to move in, move in different directions. And so, you know, so again, as you, as you go to the grocery store, you go to 7-Eleven, you go to Piggly Wiggly, you go to the Bucky's, you go wherever you go to buy your lottery tickets, and you think about winning that billion dollars, that 999 plus million dollars. Think about what is it that I would do with my time if I did win that billion dollars, and what's preventing me from doing it now? And I'll, I'll leave you with a, a word of wisdom that my father gave me um, once. Uh, he had had a couple strokes and he was in the hospital and I went to go visit him. And so when I went to go visit him in the hospital, he said to me, um, you know, did you eat breakfast today? And I said, no, I didn't eat breakfast. He says, why not? And my answer was, cause I never eat breakfast and I never have. And he says, well, just cause you haven't done it in the past doesn't mean that you can't start. Um, and profound words of wisdom, because as we look at our lives, we think about, I wish I was rich, I wish I had money, I wish this, I wish that, 
blah, 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 bloop, diddy, bloop, diddy, blue. But the reality is, is we, most of us don't know what we would do if we got it. And I guarantee you that if you start to visualize and you start to engage in those things that you would do, even if you weren't getting paid for it, you'll find more enrichment in your life. And then as you start thinking about moving towards the retirement era, whether you're in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, I don't think it really matters. It's whatever it is you're doing to impact this world to make it a better place, you can start doing those things. And then it'll help start to clear that, clarify that picture for you going down the road sooner rather than later. So I thought I'd leave that with you. And I also wanted to make a video wearing a different shirt than my red Coca-Cola shirt because my wife said that everybody's going to think you only have one shirt around the world. And and I told her that's my favorite shirt, but I guess I'll make a video wearing something else. So that's about all I had. Uh, I'd look forward to seeing your subscriptions. Please subscribe to the channel. That'll keep us going. Keep pushing out the algorithm. So keep subscribing to the channel, liking the content. If there's something specifically you want to talk about, feel free to leave it in the comments or to send me an email to the real at at gmail.com. Otherwise, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.